In this video, I'm going to show you my top things to do in Yokohama. One of my favorite places near Tokyo is Yokohama. So the thing is, Yokohama has just so much stuff to do here. I can dedicate several different videos on food, on places to go, but I wanted to kind of condense it all and make one video that just shows my top highlights of this area. So I'm going to cover some of the more popular tourist spots, but I'm just going to cover some of my favorite local spots as well, so you guys can get a mix of everything. What's nice about Yokohama is just about an hour away from Tokyo, so it's definitely easy to get to. And also, for those of you who are coming here for the Rugby World Cup, the Olympics, or just coming to see a baseball game, then stay tuned because I'm making this guide with all of you in mind. But before I start, if you guys want to see what I'm doing on the daily, then definitely check out my Instagram account. And if you want to help support the channel, check out my Tokyo merch. All right, so pack your bags. We're taking a trip all around Yokohama. Number 10, Cup Noodle Museum. All right, so this one, I'm really excited to show you guys because in fact, I don't know where else in the world you can actually make your own cup of noodles. And this is one of those activities that's perfect for the family, especially the young ones, because one, you get to experience the whole cup noodle making process, and two, you get to take home your own cup of noodles. All right, let's go inside and let me show you how it all works. Look, we got our tickets. Hey, Michael, we're making some chicken noodles. You want some? The Cup Noodle Museum is an interactive museum fun for the entire family. Because really, who here didn't grow up on cup of noodles? Let me know if you really exist. To create my very own cup noodles at the My Cup Noodles factory, I had to get a ticket reservation for an available time slot. Tickets do get sold out on busy days, so safest bet is to reserve or go early in the morning. It's amazing, you can see how the packaging has evolved from the beginning of a time until now. Each empty cup costs 300 yen and limited one per person, but I was able to design it to my heart's content. I'm like the worst artist. That's why Michael always does the maps because this is what you get when you ask me to be creative with pens and markers. Alright, now it's time to noodle the cup. Regulators, roll out! I was able to choose from all sorts of flavors and toppings. If you guys are here, let me know what you would put on your toppings in the comments. Oh, it's still warm to the touch. All right, all done, we're on the top floor. I got it, they actually give you a cool package too to take it all home. It's like a little bag, see? I can't wait to try this. Oh, and they allow kids to experience how to make handmade chicken ramen as well. Number 9, Cosmo World. So if you're looking for a bit of an adrenaline spike or just want to take your partner on a romantic night Ferris wheel ride, this is your spot. Neighboring Cup Noodles Museum, the city amusement park is completely free to enter and you only need to buy tickets for the attractions you want. Man, I love these places. This is like perfect for the kids and someone like me. Oh, we are on the gondola. Wow, we are like quite high. Literally though, this is probably one of the best views that you can get in Yokohama. Number 8, Hechikan Ramen. This ramen shop started off renting out a space a few hours on the weekends from a local snack bar. Nicknamed Maburoshi no Ramen, meaning Phantom Ramen. Over time though, it built a following and the lines got longer and longer, eventually leading to a full store opening in 2016. Opening at 11, I arrived at 11.40 and had to wait a little more than an hour. <sighs> the line is so long. Luckily, Michael's around to entertain me. Looks like you got a bag on your head. <laughs> It's hot, protecting my head. That's one way to do it, huh? <laughs> this is their signature Niboshi Soba Ramen with extra meat and this one has their extra topping of quail eggs and both come with a generous helping of fresh chopped onions. This unassuming grey fish broth is on a whole new level. It may look plain, but it's banging on those umami drums. The owner has fused a delicate mix of Niboshi sardines, horse mackerel, jawfish, soury, and other fish to create this 100% all fish masterclass broth. All right, so let's just take our first bite. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. Umami is just popping. There's so many different flavors of kind of like fish in here. And what's nice is that the fish broth is not fishy at all. It's not like you would expect it to kind of be like really bitter or really like fishy. It's not, it's smooth and just very, very refined. 
I love this like the gray kind of like look to it. It's like a nice thin noodle. The noodles itself, they're kind of thin, but at the same time, they're not too hard, which is nice. Oh, it's so good. Look at that delicious meat, freshly cut. Mm, the meat is just tender delicious. I cannot believe we're having meat this tender here. Wow, I am just blown away. Undeniable. This is a winner. That just hit the spot. Let's go to the next place. Number seven. Yokohama Stadium. This behind me is Yokohama Stadium. If you're looking to catch a baseball game or you're here for the Olympics, then this is a spot. What's really nice is that it's right next to Chinatown, Akarenga, and Yamashita Park. So there's just so much to do here. Opened in 1978, Yokohama Stadium, or as the locals call it, Hamasta, is home to Yokohama Bay Stars baseball team. It's a two minute walk from Kanai Station, so access is as easy as getting to your front zipper. There's not a lot of shops and restaurants around the stadium itself, as all the shops and the restaurants are located inside of the stadium. You will find Yokohama Park, where you can chill with your friends or bring your kids to play before the game starts. What's nice about Yokohama, especially compared to Tokyo, is that this is a Sunday today that I'm walking around and it's just so wide open. It's not that crowded compared to Tokyo. Wow, it's amazing. It really just makes me so happy. The positivity is just flowing today. They're even just playing music right behind me. Number six, Yamashita Park. So right now we're in Yamashita Park. It's one of the perfect places to come here and chill with your friends. It's right by the ocean and there's just so much green here. There's the trees, there's the grass, and like a perfect picnic spot. Like literally, it is just so peaceful. And again, I'm here on a Sunday. It's like a perfect sunny day and it's actually not that busy. And if you see just right behind me, there's a huge ship that's always docked there that you can go and check out. And let me show you something else. Like right there, you can't see it right there over there, is just a pier. There's another pier and on top of the pier is like a grassy area they can also chill. And then just right there, just past it, there's Zonohana Park, which is also another like chill spot. So it's everything you would want if you just want to kind of like hang out with friends and just enjoy the day. And so one of the things is this, it's so clean. Everyone just cleans up after themselves. That's one of the beautiful things about Japan. Uh, one thing I remember is when Pokemon Go came out. I remember Michael and I coming here and catching like a whole ton of Pokemon. Oh, those were the days. And if you want to take a boat cruise just at Yamashita Park right behind me, you can buy your tickets for boat cruises here. Also inside of Yamashita Park, there's a beautiful rose garden for all the old people who like looking at flowers. Just kidding. Moving on. And what's really nice by Yamashita Park, there's a lost in convenience store. So if you want to get some drinks or snacks, then this is the spot to do it. And what I love doing personally is I like to get one drink at a time so that you have cold drinks the entire day. Number 5. Shopping in Minato Mirai. Here's the skinny. Minato Mirai Station is directly connected to Queen Square and Minato Mirai Tokyo Square. It has a massive collection of 200 shops and restaurants. If you keep walking towards Sakuragicho, you'll hit Landmark Plaza which is at the base of Landmark Tower. And now I'm in Landmark Plaza and this spot is right next to Queens. There's actually a lot of brand name stores here and some pretty dope restaurants. They've got Tetsu which is one of my favorite ramen spots. And they have a footie if you're looking for a vegan ramen. And look there's a Totoro shop in here, let's go inside. Near Cup Noodles Museum, you'll find Yokohama World Porters. So one quick little tip for World Porters, on the 5th place there's this place behind me called Kushio. And on Monday through Fridays during the weekdays from 11 to 5 o'clock they have an all you can eat fried skewers. Yes that's right, fried skewers. Also one of my favorites here is, is Last. It's kind of a Tex-Mex so I know it's not Japanese food or whatever but if you're kind of missing western food they have pitas, burritos, burgers and it's actually a pretty decent price. And if you're looking to barbecue on the beach but not really be at the beach then you can do it here as well. They have all you can eat and all you can drink courses. They prepare all the meat for you. All you have to do is cook it on the grill. Easy peasy. Marine and Walk is also in the same area. It's a small open mall just in front of the water. It's kind of got that SoCal beach feel to it. 
Number 4. Red Brick Warehouse so Akarenga Soko is known as Yokohama's Red Brick House. Back in the day, it used to be a customs building for all of the ships coming into port here in Yokohama. But these days, they've altered it and now it's become kind of a mall, restaurant, and food court area. But what I found personally in terms of the mall, it's a lot of smaller boutique shops. So if you're into that, then definitely come here. But if you're not that into it, then it might actually be kind of cool just to come here for the restaurants, especially if you're coming from Yamashita Park, you've been hanging out all day, you have been having drinks, and you just want to get some food. They do have some popular chain restaurants here like Kawaina, which is a burger joint. They do have Bill's, which is a pancake spot. And they also have this Omurai's place that's super, super popular here in Japan. You can watch them flip the omelet right onto the rice in one fell swoop. It's pretty cool. But also, as you can see, if you come here during the week, it's fairly quiet. You can see behind me, there's not a lot going on but if you come here on the weekend and you're lucky enough then they have some festivals going on just like this this is another chill day spot where you can sit down with some friends grab a snack while also tipping back a few a perfect Sunday fun day so, so the original plan was to take you to Akarenga and take you inside and take you to the food court and we we're gonna show you the omurais but guess what there is a festival going on today or what do you call kind of like a food festival a matsuri so i had to get the cheese takoyaki you don't really see it very often takoyaki smothered with cheese cheesy deezy all for measy takoyaki yeah mm. bring on more food number three Amimoto Izu Sushi. So I had to get you away from all the tourist spots and take you to this hidden gem. This shop has been serving locals for more than 20 years and it's just a few minutes away from the Yokohama station. The shop buys market fresh seafood every morning and utilizes the same preparation techniques found at luxury sushi restaurants. Yup, I'm going high-end sushi with my low-end wallet. So this is a very local spot in Yokohama. You don't really see a lot of foreigners in this place, so that's why I really wanted to share with you. The funny thing is, it's a kaiten sushi place, but if you look at the conveyor belt, like, don't see any fish on the conveyor belt. The reason being is that everything is made super fresh. You have to order everything directly to the chef to get what you want. The good thing is, there is an English menu, so don't worry if your Japanese skills are not up to par. What I've got, like, really quickly is I've got some negitoro, which is like a tuna with some onions on top and then bean toro here uh, it's like a, a tuna this was actually not on the English menu it's called aburi salmon which means like you're taking the salmon and they like grilled it a little bit like they flame broiled it on the top I'm just so excited right now all right let's take our first bite dip that into some soy sauce and wasabi all right let's try this grilled salmon that is good Number two, Chinatown. For sure one of my favorite spots. Chinatown is full of history and calories. History-wise, in 1859, the Yokohama Seaport was opened and many Chinese immigrants and traders arrived and formed settlements, built schools, community centers, facilities, which became the start of what we know today as Chinatown. And calorie-wise, this place is a foodie's dream house with food shops littering the streets. I mean, look at all this food. You've got your steam buns, Jackie Shrumpao, food buffets. The food goes on for days. Makes me wonder how large Chinatown is. It's actually the largest Chinatown in all of Japan and one of those can't miss spots in Yokohama. The thing is I've already done a video on this spot alone so I'm gonna link to that video in the description so you guys can definitely check it out yourself. All right on to the next spot. And number one. Sky Garden at Landmark Tower. All right, so I've got a special surprise tip. So stick around till the end. Hint, it starts with a B and ends with an ear with a view. So now we're at the highest point in Yokohama in the Landmark Tower. We're actually on the 69th floor and it's 273 meters high. Look how high we are now compared to before. The Ferris wheel is just down there. And what's really cool is that there's a 360 degree panoramic view so you can go all the way around this place and see all of Yokohama from all different sides. It's not a bad deal for a thousand yen and you can come here in the evening at night so if you don't come during the day you can see all the Yokohama lights. And this is my little secret. You can come up here to the Sky Cafe. There's six black leather sofas up here. These seats are free to use if you're a customer of the cafe. So all you have to do is buy a drink and you can sit here and enjoy the amazing view. 
At night, the seats are reservation only, so if you want to surprise your partner with an amazing city sky view, make sure to book a seat in advance. Map and links are always in the description. And what better way to end this video than being on top of the world having a beer overlooking Yokohama. But before we go, I wanted to thank our sponsor, Mobile Japan Sim. Without them, I wouldn't be able to make these awesome videos for you guys. Oh, and something you guys know with more than 400,000 visitors coming to Japan for the Rugby World Cup, Sim cards are expected to sell out out completely. Luckily, mobile can ship SIM cards to your home before you leave for Japan or you can pick it up right when you arrive in Japan. With mobile Japan SIM cards in your phone, you can easily navigate to Yokohama Stadium to watch the match, keep up with the scores, find the best transport links, translate phrases and menus, and update your social media accounts with all the awesome photos you're taking here in Japan. Here's 5 quick reasons why you should use mobile. 1. You get free shipping to your home address. 2. You can choose pickup in Japan which is also free. 3. Mobile offers free exclusive rugby supporters bundle which includes a free beer who else gives you free beers with sim cards four they have an english speaking support team and five the majority of the profits goes to charity buy a sim for mobile today by clicking on the link in the description below and finally if you guys want to see what i'm doing on the daily then check out my instagram account if you want to help support the channel check out my tokyo merch and if you want to see more of my japan guys or just what i'm doing in tokyo then definitely hit that subscribe button and the bell button i release a video every saturday morning at 9 a.m japan time hit that subscribe button and the bell button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.